what is the radiographic appearance of pleural effusion what is the appearance of impermethrosis in an x ray how does pleural effusion appear when the patient is supine how does a soft pulmonic effusion appear what is located pleural effusion and how does it appear what is insisted effusion when is a ct scan or ultrasound necessary in pleural effusion these are all the questions i'll be answering you in this video welcome to radio clinics today's topic is imaging of pleural effusion in a chest x-ray presence of fluid in the pleural space is called pleural effusion normally in physiological conditions also we have approximately 15 ml of fluid in the pleural space this 15 ml of fluid is not detected on a radiograph for detection of pleural effusion by a or x-ray in a routine posterior anterior chest x-ray approximately 175 to 250 ml of pleural fluid is required in a lateral decubitus film approximately 25 to 50 ml of pleural fluid is detected and by usc pleural fluid as less as 10 ml above normal can be detected pleural fluid on a posterior anterior chest radiograph appears as blunting of the costophrenic angle we can see that the right costophrenic angle is acute which means the angle is less than 90 degree while in the left side the angle is blunted and we can see meniscus or crescentic shaped opacity in the left side and this is a pleural effusion pleural effusion causes crescentic opacity or opacity with a meniscus sign not all pleural effusion lie in the dependent area of the lungs forming a meniscus when the pleural effusion does not lie in the dependent area of the lungs forming a meniscus then it is known as loculated pleural effusion a loculated pleural effusion is an effusion which exists in loculi like confined to a certain space of pleura instead of being free floating just imagine like fluid in a small plastic bag we can see the example of loculated pleural effusion in this case in this case we can see that the pleural fluid is lying in the left lateral aspect of the thorax it has convex shape instead of meniscus this convex shape is the hallmark of a loculated pleural effusion sometimes we might be confused with a mass in the lung in such case we should look at the base of the lesion the base of the lesion is broad based towards the pleura and this is suggestive of its pleural origin sometimes locations of pleural fluid may occur in the fissures here we can see the horizontal fissure which is separating the two lobes of the lung and if loculation occur in this fissure then it appears like this this is known as fissural effusion and this is a form of insisted effusion this insisted effusion is sometimes very difficult to differentiate from a long mass but insisted effusion has well defined margins because the margins are formed from the visceral pleura and beside this insisted effusion are spindle in shape like this in this case also we can see that there is mass in the right mid zone of the lung but this lesion has sharp well defined margins and it also has spindle shape and this is suggestive of insisted effusion furthermore this effusion lies in the region of the expected location of the horizontal fissure so we we should note that the horizontal fissure extends from the hilum of the lung towards the periphery of the lung if you are unaware of the location of the hilum and about the anatomy of the lung you can check out my video on anatomy of the lungs in the chest x ray up here what about pleural effusion in a supine patient on erect films pleural effusion form a meniscus like this because they are pulled by gravity downwards but in supine positions the gravity pulls the effusion down towards the posterior aspect of the lungs so the lungs appear more hazy and more radio opaque compared to the opposite side this is known as a veiling opacity so we can see in this case that the left lung appears lucent but the right lung appears relatively radio opaque and we can also appreciate obliteration of the right costophrenic angle this patient was admitted in the icu and the x-ray was taken in the supine position this is a case of supine pleural effusion 
Now later when this patient was made erect, the pleural effusion again came to the dependent aspect of the lung and it, it appears as a meniscus. So sometimes if we are confused from right lung consolidation from pleural effusion in a supine patient, then we can redo the patient in erect position. And if the patient can't go into erect position, then the patient can be imaged in a lateral decubitus position. What is the subpulmonic effusion? Sometimes pleural fluid lies almost exclusively in between the lung base and the diaphragm. This causes apparent elevation and flattening of the diaphragm. The peak of this pseudo diaphragm will lie lateral to the normal position. So in this case, we can see that the left hemidiaphragm appears elevated. But instead of the hemidiaphragm, this is a pleural fluid. How do we differentiate it from a hemidiaphragm is by looking at the apex of the lesion. The apex of the lesion in this case is lying laterally. While if the hemidiaphragm is elevated, the apex will lie in the central aspect like this. So this suggests that this is a pleural effusion. Furthermore, if the diaphragm is elevated, the gas under the diaphragm will also be shifted upwards. But in this case, we can see that the fundic gas of the stomach is in normal position. This is the fundic gas and this is in normal position. So this is a case of subpulmonic effusion and it should not be confused with elevated hemidiaphragm. There are two types of effusion, exudative effusion and transudative effusion. Transudative effusion is seen when there is increase in hydrostatic pressure or a decrease of capillary oncotic pressure. It is seen in case of cardiac failure, nephrotic syndrome, chronic kidney disease or CKD and cirrhosis. Exudative effusion on the other hand is due to increase in permeability of microcirculation or alteration in the pleural space drainage to lymph nodes and it is usually seen in case of infection and malignancy. These two are very difficult to differentiate from an x-ray and we can diagnose this via aspiration. Can we diagnose impyema from x-ray? Impyema means pus in the pleural cavity. It is usually caused by bacterial infection of fluid within a pre-existing anatomical space. In this case, a pleural cavity. It is very difficult to differentiate impyema from pleural effusion by x-ray, but impyema tends to be unilateral. They are asymmetrical if they are bilateral. They are usually loculated, so they have convex margins unlike effusions which have crescentric or meniscus like shape. They are usually associated with reef crowding. Diagnosis is by aspiration. CT may also sometimes help in diagnosis of impyma. In this x-ray we can see a radio opaque density in the left lower zone. This radio opaque density has broad base towards the pleural surface and it has convex inner margin. So this is a pleural based lesion. This was a case of loculated pleural effusion and on aspiration we could diagnose that this case was a case of impymathoriasis. What is the role of USG in pleural effusion? USG is very good at detecting very small amount of effusions. It is also helpful in confirming whether there is pleural effusion or whether the opacity is from a consolidation or a pleurally based mass. It can also give some information on the nature of effusion by looking at the separations and turbidity. If there are separations and turbidity of the effusion, then it is suggestive of infection or an exudative effusion. USC can also help in aspiration of the fluid. What is the role of CT? Role of CT is used in quantification of the effusion. We can say that if there is mild effusion, moderate diffusion or gross effusion. It can also detect loculations in the effusion. If the effusions are posteriorly or behind the heart, then they may not be detected in a radiograph. All effusions can be detected in a CT scan. We can also locate where the loculations are. In this case, we can see that this area represents effusion. This is also an effusion and we can see that there are loculations in the posterior aspect, in the lateral aspect as well as in the anterior aspect of the thorax. CT also helps in evaluation of the pleura. We can appreciate the thickening of the pleura, enhancement of the pleura via a CT scan. 
this helps in guiding for further management ct can also find the cause of effusion x-ray and ultrasound are poor in detecting cause of the effusion but via a ct scan we can see if there are presence of any mass in the thorax if the effusion is caused by infection we can see consolidation in the lung if the effusion is from cardiac cause we can see there is evidence of cardiomegaly and chamber enlargement we can also do aspiration of the pleural fluid for diagnostic purposes via a CT scan when it is very difficult from ultrasound. Thank you.